Well, where to begin? In this uh, Politics is Done in the Darkness audio cast number four. I think number four. Well, we'll check and see about the count later. Well, let's start with uh, the events in uh, New Hampshire. They had a primary. And um, I'm not particularly interested in the Republican side. Although it is fascinating that people are now choosing anti-establishment, to some extent anti-establishment, candidates. Like Donald Trump, if you can call him anti-establishment, he certainly isn't, um, you know, he certainly isn't Jeb Bush. And, and that would be the worst case scenario if it were to be that we have an election where it's Bush against Clinton again. That would be, uh, well, it certainly would lack all creativity and imagination, wouldn't it? So it's a good thing. And as bad as Trump is, he has, uh, there's a few things he says that make sense. You know, when he says that uh, we shouldn't be at odds with Russia. When he says that Russia is going after the quote-unquote ISIS. And, uh, you know, why, why does that bother us? It may, it may be to a recalibration or a different look at what the how the empire operates if Trump were to become president not likely I mean it's not impossible but it's it's more likely that um, that that Hillary is slated to become the next president and that's why it's more interesting to look at the Democratic side where where Bernie Sanders won the polls said he was going to win but that never is a sure thing being that uh, in the past the polls and the results sometimes would not match, leading a lot of people to be very suspicious about the voting apparatus, including myself. It, it is it looks suspicious at times. The electronic voting machines, which um, seem to be uh, Easily manipulated, and I, I would, I would, I would think. And so, well, and so uh, it looks as though this time, in particular, the election was um, may have been a clean election, and uh, matched the polls more or less. It's sort of uh, Bernie getting sixty percent and Hillary getting forty percent. Now we'll see what happens in future elections and it's more likely that in the upcoming states that uh, that Hillary will win and we'll be stuck with the Hillary Clinton candidacy for the Democratic um, nomination the Democratic side of the uh, of the uh, 2016 election to the extent that elections matter, I suppose it does matter because Hillary is very much, I guess you would say, a hawk and uh, very much relies on American, I guess, domination, supremacy in war, even though, even though the reality might not reflect this anymore, which leads me into the Second topic as usual, Syria. Syria is ongoing and it's tragic to see the, the, the damage done. The pictures, which are uh, the images from Syria, which uh, the buildings, it looks like an apocalypse. It's horrific. And I'm told that in Yemen, you know, it's, it's, it's bad as well. In Yemen. It's bad as well in Yemen. And so, we have the Saudis claiming that they might get involved in Syria. I don't know how that would be likely, being that they have enough problems in Yemen. They're not, although the, the place is being wrecked, 
the, the reports tell us at least that uh, the Saudis are not winning. What the truth is, who would know, but uh, this is what, um, this is generally what is agreed upon. And then you have Turkey, with the rumors at least, that Turkey will invade Syria, which begs the question, the question needs to be answered then, what would the Russians do about that? Would they come into direct confrontation with Turkey, a member of NATO? Or, or if the Saudis were to send troops, what would that mean for Russia? We have the disaster that is Libya. You know, um, what can be said about that? That was uh, Hillary... Um, in the forefront, clamoring for war. Many on the left fell for this, uh, I don't know, this facade, this charade. In Libya especially, and even in Syria, I've had leftists argue with me, especially with Libya, about how they were activists. They only wanted NATO air cover, one told me. I mean, well... <laughs> How can you take them seriously if they want NATO air cover? I mean, isn't NATO everything that... But, but it doesn't sink in. Including Noam Chomsky. Noam Chomsky has been uh, horrible, awful, when it comes to Libya and Syria, and, and many other things. He could hardly qualify as a serious analyst at this point. And I won't get into all the, I won't spend a lot of time on that is what I'm saying. People can find that out for themselves. That Chomsky has failed for over the last several years to provide any legitimate critique of, of foreign policy at all. Maybe domestic policy to an extent, but certainly not foreign policy. Anyway, I've digressed somewhat. I've rambled. A little bit, but these are the things that um, that are going on. And uh, lest I spend too much time and make this um, audio cast slash YouTube video slash mm, whatever else you want to call it, to um, <laughs> you can call it what you want. It won't bother me. You can call me names or what have you. Anyway. Lest I make it too long, we'll, we'll end it there. And nothing has really been resolved. There seems to be that there will be no peace talks in Syria. The world is still a mess. And the U.S. seems at a, a crossroads in history. What will we become? Will we... Uh, be just an out of control has been of an empire on a rampage or will we become uh, a country among countries in the world and accept that fate which would be much more pleasant for the United States and the world to be reasonable again alright 